Welcome to log number 47. I'm recording this on the 13th of September 2024 and it's a Friday, the end of my work week. And I'm recapping what happened during this week and what I have achieved. This week was all about beginning the illustration part of the design and actually drawing after what it seems to be years. I think it was maybe a month, a month since I've actually through something and I started in this new sized composition that is much more bigger than all the other six compositional designs that I've done in the past given that this is the major design that is going to introduce the chapters and from this you can interact and, and, and explore the additional designs there's a lot of space that uh, in detail can exist on your screen, I'm going to be opening the and showing the compositional aspect of the design with shapes and forms and how I'm going to be tackling things. As you can see, we have 10 shapes. The way that it sort of works doesn't really translate very well in how compositionally it's broken down in shapes, but it shows where the elements of the design is. So number one is the floor, two is the column, three is a rectangular shape that something exists there, four is the continuation of floor that is happening from number one, five is a massive rectangular shape thing that has a triangular section in it, six is another triangular section of an object there, seven the back wall, eight the top wall, nine the bottom part of um of the wall on the back and 10 what seems to be an arc so this is the composition of the second chapter and i have tackled number one and two going on to three now i haven't finished any of them but you can see the shaded area of where i have begun to sort of chip off this monolith i metaphorically say it as such because it's a small it's a slow process into gathering yourself and tackling this big undertaking. I managed to, to do a few things in the composition and I was very surprised by the results, primarily because I was used to a small section, a small sort of sized composition and now moving onto a composition that is the height is 65 cm and the width 74, sorry, 47 by 4. Point 0.4, sorry. So let me say that again. 75 height by 47.4 width. Which my previous point, if I'm not mistake, mistaken, was um, 42 height and 27 or 28 width. So you can see how it's almost double. And I realized how much space I have for me to add those details, those lines that I couldn't before. And it's quite interesting because here I can add all the knowledge that I've gathered from the six different compositions that I've done before and really make it work and hone in on it. And I was very surprised. I was very, very surprised. And equally, I found out that um, it's so diverse, the amount of object that exists in this composition, given obviously it's much bigger. It's something that it's going to introduce um, a chapter. and. I've been thinking very smartly on how to interact uh, with every section and how this chapter can relate to chapter 3 and the interactables in chapter 3 that I've done so far. So I was very surprised by my ability to document things even though the break that I had. I think any, every artist or every sort of any trade that when you have a break from it you feel like am I going to have a, a hard time going back to it or an easy time? It's quite um, it's quite interesting, I would say, to to have that duality in you and to have that ability to comprehend everything and and at the same time struggle to. But equally, as I move forward and as I put myself into another conversation, another aspect of me exploring in a, in the unknown. I see myself answer many of the questions that I had 
the, in the month that passed, I realized how my art became a therapy session for me, if anything. And if it wasn't obvious for my fourth year, four years in flow, it became obvious now. In the month that I sort of couldn't draw, I was quite unbalanced, both mentally and how I was going through life. And having that moment where I sit down, those eight hours that I consistently draw from the measurements and then go off the, from the go off to the PDM, forbidden path and, and, and traverse the winding roads and how everything sort of starts the same but has different turns and twists into whatever it may lead to. And the aspect of being lost, the aspect of going through it again, allows for this sort of isolating part to come and nurture you. And, uh, that's the best way I can explain this therapeutic session that I'm having with this. Because um, life can be quite hectic and quite sort of intolerable at some points where it throws things at you and you have to deal with them and sometimes you need a moment and the moment is not given and when you do get that moment eventually because we always do get a moment even in the time span of having a crazy sort of week, months or year and you have your outlet, you have your form of expressing yourself it begins to translate and make sense again all the things that didn't make sense before and in fact, this is the fear that I fear sometimes a lot, and, and especially with the stonemason, because I've been quite methodical for the year that passed since October, November, when I started the, the theme. And my life has been changing quite a bit, but at the same time, consistency has been, has been given in the stonemason story and coming back to it and relating to it and moving that forward. And given that it's such a, it's such a sort of esoteric and, and, and personalized theme that the story becomes your reality and the character becomes you in a way. You can distinguish between the character that you're creating from the people around you and sometimes you feel more comfort in the fictional character you created. And I started to question that quite a lot and I have always done in the logs. I think I've said this quite again, but... I think it's because it's part of me and I feel familiar with me and I don't know if it's a limitation or putting limitations on myself given that this character obviously which is an extent of who I feel I am is, is sort of traversing a life that I set out for him and is tackling answers that I wish I could and I'm, so, I'm, I'm sort of illustrating them in a romanticized way but at the same time with the rawness of, of what the actual feeling can really spike into. And honestly, it's been magnificent to, to sit down and have that. And the amount of times that life will push me away or, or take me away from the stone mason, I always feel like whenever I come back to it and I put my pencil on paper, Everything begins to make sense again. And as hard as it is to consistently have like this methodical eight hours every day I spend in doing this and that aspect of every day will have the same impact, every day will have the same sort of result of you feeling fulfilled. It doesn't work that way. And usually it's a temporary feeling that comes and goes and it goes in cycles and it's hard when it's not there. It's hard when it's difficult to move forward. It's even harder when you feel inadequate in what you're doing and you feel like you're wasting your time or you feel like you could have done all the other things that you think you can, but you instead you're doing this and why is it not working? Why is it not yielding the results that you want? And I think many, many can relate with what I'm saying in any different profession. Because we imaginarily, sorry, in our imagination, we feel that because we give it so much time in our days, it should give us results. But 
results can be equally that it it doesn't have to have a specific quote unquote positive result, but a result that shows yeah that you might need some more time or that you might need some more researching or development of your skills or whatever. I try to really break down all these walls that have been built for me in art and have been built for me in this time span of me being in the profession of of an artist that it's a very skillful based art but at the same time is very subjective. It's sort of like it could be everything but then nothing and then all these dichotomies that sort of create a divide between what what am I after all in the end. And that question the more I progress through it, I understand that it's such a personal thing that nobody can really point their fingers at and say this, but much rather the more you you engage with it in yourself and the moments you have in expressing yourself, the more you begin to understand it. And equivalently, not because you've been doing this for so many years, it means that it should be easier now. And in fact, if it gets easier now for a long period of time, I think someone can define that as you being comfortable enough in not progressing. And uncomfortability comes the, well, positive uncomfortability, which I define as more of um, you're comfortably uncomfortable, but at the same time you have the desire to keep moving forward versus the it's overwhelming, I want to like give up, I want to sit down, it's everything is too fast, that type of overwhelmness. When you have that positive one that I just described, it allows for you to move forward and change things. And at least in my art and in in why I want to continue doing this is to have these changing moments, is to flourish into something that I don't know as of yet what it can be, but the prospect of it being something other than this makes me take a plunge, makes me take that route that is not usually tread, that is not really guaranteed success or guaranteed anything let alone I don't believe anything is guaranteed given that they can be doing the most correct moves at the moment in gaining that guaranteed result but that the result can change by the time you finished it so it's um it's always a double-edged sword and what you as a as a person as an individual and as a whatever your profession at the title there once out of what you're doing and coming back to the drawing once more and coming back to me sitting down and drawing, especially in a bigger piece, especially in a bigger sized paint or well, painting uh, paper. Um, it really reminded me the aspect of, of endlessness. And I saw myself becoming less and less attached to what I'm doing. Usually when I would create the composition and I would sort of have a context and a, and a way of how it should look, I wouldn't really deviate a lot from it. But now, even in the small left corner that you just saw that I shaded, that I just tackled and finished there, I changed it quite a lot. I, I done one object, and then the second object, I'm like, this object, by my experience, can work better if I change it a little bit here, or if I add this new element that I feel like it's going to be needed now that I see it in front of me. And I did it very easily without having any sort of re resistance from my part. And it was beautiful. I enjoyed having the ability to feel detached, but at the same time, confident behind what I'm doing. It means that I've been a very good road in, in learning and, and attempting to finish the first arc. And I feel this week we're going to be tackling numbers one, two, and three, completely finishing them off. And at the same time, maybe measuring number four, yeah, maybe. And number two, given that it's a very straight column going through the through the height of the paper, I'm not going to probably do all of it. After, I would rather do one, four, and three completely and then do number two, then start on five, six, then go on seven, eight, nine, and ten, maybe. I think so. I think that would be a good way of, of going around it. I also have a lot of measurements that I haven't really documented on the on the design and so it is my sort of hope that in this week that is that you're listening to this or when you're listening to this the week that the workload that I'm going to be undertaking this 
this current um, work week, I'm going to be having no measurements done, given that I've already done it to today and yesterday. And I can ease through in enjoying the drawing process and really getting behind it. So I'm excited to to continue moving forward and continue to enjoy this as much as I can because it's um it's a dearly missed expression that i that I keep forgetting how amazing it is to co- to leave and then come back to it that feeling of like this is what i this is what I was missing you know it it, it really becomes prevalent and it really becomes accentuated quite a lot and I love that I love that to to the fullest and and what it makes me scared and how life can change things so rapidly and can move me away from this but at the same time I don't want to stay the same I don't want to be in this routine all the time and balance is a is the word that probably needs to be sort of accentuated here and and put on the forefront but um I don't know if balance balance can be had when when things like of this nature exist because it takes so much time but then it's a small fraction of the time that you can dedicate on it so you can move forward still need I still have so many things to answer and so many things that my mind brings and then takes away and then brings again so I can reconsider and all that it's it's a never-ending journey even if the story ends the lessons behind it will never end and that's very proudly shown in flow the story ended in 2022 was it just before 2023 was about to start it was in september and the amount of things that i've learned having to look back to it and having to write and reflect is the foundations of what i'm doing here and it was showing a different part of my life a much more secluded a much more sort of I am behind the camera doing what I'm doing, but now I'm trying to balance social life and the social life coming into what I'm doing and adding the lessons that I've learned from it in the story. Because it's, it's, you can learn so much from researching online or reading or understanding things. But when I went to travel last year and I saw and experienced people living differently in the hours that I spend my days, It was the greatest research and the greatest inspiration anyone could ask. The fact that I right now at 10 a.m. I'm sitting down recording on a Friday. What what is or what are people doing at 10 a.m. on a Friday? Some are getting ready to go to work. Some are at work. Some are spending time with their children. Some are walking or considering this problem that they have. It's endless. The amount of things anyone can do at any given time is just endless. And to think that you you coexist, we all coexist, and to think that you're so different and you spend it so differently, it's fascinating. I recently came down to the conclusion that individualism, when you're having a one-on-one section, shines the most, shines brightly, because you hear and feel the person for who they are without any influences. But when you have a group setting or people in a group they sacrifice part of their individualism so they can relate they can combine themselves with each other and and complement each other and have a good time it's it's part of our innate abilities of of being a social creature at least that's what makes sense to me that in a group setting we lose part of our individuality for a brief moment or however long we want to be surrounded by people constantly But when we have that one-on-one section with someone, just us and them, you see and feel different things. The communication becomes much more direct and much more vulnerable than what it could be in a group setting. So it's it's all food for thoughts that I observe in my life and, and try to relate in some shape or form in the story. Because um. This is something very profound for me. Um, the story that I'm creating and, and, and the emotions and the character that I'm bringing forward is, is magnificent. It's something that I feel 
if I were to never have the chance to do this again, this would be happily my last thing that I that I would contribute in 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 the art and in the arts in general, and I would be satisfied because I, as I have established in my previous logs, or I think it was what log number in the thirtieth or in the twentieth somewhere there, I realized that I cannot do this for long i don't have i won't have the ability to do this for long sit down for periods of time in in you know in the isolation that i am and spend another three four years in tackling this because life is happening and i feel like maybe i'm missing out but at the same time i have a reason why i'm missing it out but the older you get the more you lose focus a lot you lose focus a lot because Life shows you how simple it can be when you move through it in a calm state and how hectic and unbelievably miserable it can be when you're trying to balance all these things and trying to be everything for everyone. And in this story, I'm really showing that. I'm really showing how the, di the dichotomy of you trying to be everything for everyone and how that affects you and then having that moment with yourself that you sit down and you're like, am I this person? And you just go back and then you experience all of this and you experience the um, the reflection, the intimateness of, of, re of re discovering yourself and how much have you given away for other people and how much were that, where they weren't it and needed to give away and what made you give them away and it wasn't even giving or loaning it's just endless and it's beautiful honestly i i hope that when it gets released especially this first arc you get to see this uh, this passion and this this love that i have for this because i don't think i ever had any <laughs> Well, maybe in my last three paintings in flow, I had like this desire that this is something that I want to be associated with when someone looks into my work versus all the other things that I've done. Not because I'm ashamed of them or they're in inadequate in skill, but I feel the more you become aware of who you are, the more you want to see that versus something that it was a confusing state that you you are appreciated. Obviously, you appreciate that that state came into your life and that state came into your your existence, so you can change and learn and all that. So it has a sort of like, damn, this really was the beginning. But then when you learn all that and you apply it in action and you see parts of yourself unfolding so clearly, you're like, wow, <laughs> it's really powerful. So yeah. This log sort of had the work week sort of breakdown and then my me mental state going back to drawing and how I how much it, it sort of begins to make sense to me. It begins to ground me and make me feel that what I'm doing, what I have been doing is what I want to do and what I wouldn't want to change. Although balance is needed, I am going through the right moves and I'm asking the right questions. And I think on the log number 46, I have achieved not only the heightened effect of me not, not wishing to give this up at any given sort of turning point, but the amount of effort that I slowly, through days that seemed like will lead to nothing, or, or moments that I thought, why am I doing this and why am I adding this stress in my life, um, slowly begin to show me the, the fruits of their labor. And I feel that's, that's something that needs to be stated here, that it took 46 weeks. It took 46 weeks of very diverse weeks, not just, oh, I was drawing every single day. No, I was allowing life to change me, allowing life to take me away from my studio and, and travel a little bit because of the obligation that I had to do and then be flexible, that I'm incapable in many ways in my life to become. And flexibility is humbling me a lot. <laughs> so um, 
<laughs> attempt being flexible. <laughs> what a lame way to end the log. <laughs> Regardless, thank you very much for listening and, and, and going through this with me. And if you're listening to this uh, in a sort of orderly weekly fashion of me, you, you hear this every week great and if you hear this when it's everything is done and years has have passed i hope um it all makes sense to you when you witness the the stone masons uh story because um the reason why i'm doing it is for this when people see the work because no, nobody knows the work a lot when it's hap- when it's sort of like is happening but only knows it when it's there and it exists and having the archiving process of you understanding how many months and probably years by the time this finishes like the complete story um how much work it took and how much change it presented in someone's life is immense and it needs to be shown it needs to be said for people to really comprehend that um art has its own different Ha- Sorry, let me rephrase that. Art has its struggles, but very different struggles than other occupations. And obviously the way that you depict art will define its struggles. For me, it's shedding every time my emotional state and myself very vulnerably to be to be exposed. And it's not that I'm scared of that or I'm uh, not used to that. I'm actually very used to it. It's my normal to be like, hey, I'm having this very and the directness of how I feel and how I how I'm 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 sort of um experiencing my emotional states. But it's more the having to spend time in your day to answer how are you feeling and what is it caused sorry, what causes it and how is this affecting your drawing right now? How is this affecting the person, the individual that you created metaphorically and in the story? And yeah. So many answers, so many, so many things in general. And it's not overwhelming, not at all. Because a path has been paved, but the path is a suggestion of the direction that I could take and the exit that I see it very far into the horizon. I can stray away at any time and I can go back and, and move forward or do or just stand still no right or wrong answer just what is needed at the time of consideration and with that i will actually finish the look thank you very much and we'll talk next week